Let me rehearse them again. Verse 3. Verse 9. Father, cause your great holy name to be honored and reverenced and esteemed and treasured and loved and valued above all things. This is the feel. My voice is intending to communicate how big and strong and deep and wonderful are these three petitions. Father, verse 10, Cause your glorious, sovereign, kingly rule to hold sway without obstruction everywhere in the universe. And right here especially. Verse 10b, cause your all-wise, all-good, all-just, all-holy will to be done all over the world the way the angels do it in heaven, and they do it perfectly and joyfully. We want to see a planet like that. Bring it. And end of the big part of the prayer. That's the breathtaking part of the prayer, and, and when we pray it, we're caught up into great things and glorious things and global things and eternal things, and God wants that to happen. I mean, you, you may feel just so absolutely ordinary, like, I understand the second half of this prayer. I'm there, I live there, and, and I am in this message saying, come on up, come on up into the first half of the prayer as well. Never take your feet off the ground. Never think you can go without food. Never think you can go without being forgiven and forgiving. Never think that you don't need help in wrestling with sin. Keep your feet on planet Earth, but come on up into the first three because they're not there in vain. God means you to taste this, to be engaged in this, to have your heart taken with his name, his kingdom, his will. He really does. No matter how ordinary you feel right now, how sinful you feel, he knows all that. He gave you the second half. He just said, come on up into this first half.